Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Mark. He's back in the saddle. Back in the saddle. <laughs> We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 47. Uh, for those of you who are part of Good Shepherd and say college, reminder, there's only one service this Sunday. It's going to be the 1030 service. And there's a church picnic immediately after that. We're providing hot dogs and hamburgers. Come out and join us. Invite a friend. Uh, bring a side dish to share. Uh, as I said, we're providing hot dogs and hamburgers and drinks. So uh, just uh, be a good time. And join us and celebrate together what God is doing. So Isaiah chapter 47. Uh, chapter 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind flour. Put off your veil, strip off your robe, uncover your legs, and pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered, and your disgrace shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called the mistress of kingdoms. I was angry with my people, I profaned my heritage, I gave them into your hand, you showed them no mercy. On the aged you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. You said, I shall be mistress forever, so that you did not lay these things to heart, or remember their end. Now, therefore, hear this, you lover of pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am and there is no one beside me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of my children. These two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood shall come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments. You felt secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray, and you said in your heart, I am, but there is no one beside me. But evil shall come upon you, which you shall not know how to charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, for which you will not be able to atone, and ruin shall come upon you suddenly, of which you shall know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries, with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed, perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at new moons make known what shall come upon you. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No coal for warming oneself is this, no fire to sit before. Such to you are those whom you have labored, with whom you have done, your, have done business with you from your youth. They wander about, each to his own direction. There is no one to save you. Mm. Let's pray. Father, uh, teach us uh, in our own lives how we can look to other things um, and not look to you. May our trust always be in you, and in you alone we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, the kingdom that God had used to enact judgment on Judah is now going to face judgment itself. Um, so the Lord's anger against Judah is only for a moment. For yes. A, you know, it's brief in relative terms, but Babylon, this, this, uh, this sentence is like pretty much forever yeah. in there. So they're going to be wiped, wiped clean. But they, they thought, nobody's going to touch us. No. We're Babylon. Babylon the Great, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's like sometimes you almost see that that type of attitude in in the U.S. because we live in, you know, we grew up at the time of the most powerful nation yep. on earth. Nobody's going to touch us. No, we, we you know we we. But history would say yes, somebody is going <laughs> to. The, the time will come. The time will come. Um, there. Yeah, there is. There is no earthly kingdom that will last forever. Right. Um, I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Because when you're living in the moment, you think, yeah, this is, this is how it's always going to be. This is, this is it. And there can be an arrogance that raises up. I think their ultimate arrogance is they're using repeatedly the phrase, 
that God uses about himself. I am, and there is none other besides me. Yes. <laughs> right? Yep. Uh, that's... Where was that? In a couple of two different places, they, they use that. Uh, verse, a, verse 8 and 10. Yep. I am, and there is no one beside me. Um, that's, a, that's a term to use for God. I yes. The great I am, and there is none beside him. But they were using it of themselves. Yeah, they were using it of themselves. Um, and I mean, it's like just looking at the beginning, the sit on the ground without a throne. And, you know, you kind of get this initial image of a woman dressed in finery with a veil yeah. and, you know, these flowing gowns and jewelry and whatever. It's like, no, lose the veil. You are going to grind flour. <laughs> And that's taking a big rock and rolling it around on a little rock or smashing yeah. it against a little rock with grain in between. And eventually you get flour, yeah. which is very difficult, very labor intensive. And um, so it's like, you know, you're going from this greatness down to nothingness. Um, and it says, I won't be a widow and I won't see my children die it's like no that's going to happen yeah, in a happen. moment yeah and if you're to take a look at daniel um you had daniel with uh was it nebuchadnezzar at the end anyway the handwriting on the wall it's like what does this mean and daniel's like you have been weighed measured and found wanting yeah, yeah that was and after gonna, nebuchadnezzar that yeah. was a, okay that was after uh, nebuchadnezzar okay. I'm blanking on his name right now. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, you know, the the king of Babylon heard this. And then what was it? The next day the Persians rolled in? Yeah. It was it, it was it was no, that might have been the, he might have been the Persian guy Darius might have been Darius. Anyway, yeah, anyway, we're we're going we're, <laughs> we're we're going astray. Yeah. But I mean the fall of Babylon was Sudden. It was quick, and they the way they they uh, conquered Babylon was interesting because I think they the walls of Babylon were supposed to be impenetrable, and uh, I think they dammed up the river that flew flowed under the, the walls, and then they marched in underneath the wall. <laughs> so hey, with these armies that where there was a will, there was a way, right? Yes, so they, they were going to do it. Uh, they they sit securely, who sit securely, securely, who say in their heart, I am, and there is no one beside me. Well, they're going to find out. Verse That was verse 8. Um, you're going to lose that in a day. Uh, but also, the way they treated um, the, the people uh, of Israel, how they, how they mistreated the aged. They, yeah. they lay the heavy, verse 6, I was angry with my people, this is the Lord speaking, I profaned my heritage, I gave them into your hand, you showed them no mercy. On the age that you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. Basically, what these conquering nations did a lot of time is, basically, these people are going to, we're going to just work them to death. Yeah. We're just going to feed them very little, they're old people anyway, we're just we we'll get a little labor out of them, and then they're going to die. Uh, that's what they. That's how they treated treated the people. So very horrifying uh, those things. And then they also looked to many things to uh, see what was going to happen. So they had sorceries and divinations and yes. enchantments and astrology. So this is nothing different, right? So. People sometimes are put stock in horoscopes and stuff oh, yeah. like that in there. Uh, I remember a couple years ago, so uh, this was probably, this is pre-pandemic. I know that for sure. It's kind of like pre-post-pandemic. Yeah. Uh, we were doing uh, the clubs and orgs fair at Penn State. So you set all these tables out on the lawn in front of the student union building, in front of the hub, the yeah. Hutzel Union building. And they put the religious people together, the quote, religious groups together. Makes sense. So we were right next to the pagans and astrologers. When we shared the table, you only get half of a table. Wow. So it was revived campus ministry next to the pagans and astrologers. And the guy that was sitting next to us, he was, he was 
shouting out to the students as they go by. Uh, I can tell you the best time of the month to write your term paper. I can, you know, like astrology, right? Using the signs and stuff like that. I can tell you when to submit this or when to do that. That's what he was actually saying to the students in there. And we're sitting there like, uh, you know, turn to Jesus. He's <laughs> Yeah. So it was quite stunning in there. So astrology is nothing new, right? No. There's nothing new. Uh, that's what they're, he says, verse 13, you are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. So they're looking up and they're like, here's what's going to happen based on this arrangement of the stars and the moon. Yep. And they're like, okay, they're going to save you. Yeah. I, it's so tempting to look for signs and portents to try and know what's going to happen. Um, I mean, it's, it's a human thing. And, you know, you have people reading stock charts and it's like, oh, if this happens then the stock market's going to crash, or if that happens, this other stock is going to go up and you have, you know, these personality tests. It's like, oh, you are this type of person. And it's like, you know, these are just sort of random made up things. And sometimes there's, yeah, maybe a little fuzzy pattern matching that happens that right. people born in January are more prone to schizophrenia because of a lack of vitamin D. But, you know, <laughs> right. well, no, I mean, there yeah. is a just little kernel, of, right. kernel of truth behind some of these things. But I mean, it's mostly just coincidence. It's like, no, it's not the stars. It's not that. It's right. nutrition or it's this. Yeah. And people look for these things to try and get control. Yeah. And there's only so much that we can control. I mean, there are only certain things that I can fix. I can't fix everything. And the things I can't fix, it's like, okay, God, this is in your hands. It's like, I did my best. And, and you know... There's still a sinkhole. Um, <laughs> I did my best, but there's still a sinkhole. But poor, so, poor Matilda's still there. Poor Matilda's still there. <laughs> right. uh, but, you know, I did my best. And it's like, okay, this is in God's hands. And, you know, continue on with the work. But, you know, know that I can't control everything. And would it really have mattered if, it had been done two weeks earlier when the moon was full. No. 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 So we're looking to all of these things, and I think people do that today. It's like, oh, you know, of course, we just had a presidential debate last night, um, and people are looking, oh, well, who's going to be the next person? Is there going to be someone that's going to save us from this mess we're in? Yep. And I like verse 15. Uh, such are those with whom you have labored, who have done business with you from your youth, that's the Babylonians. They wander about, each in his own direction. There is no one to save you. What are we looking to for salvation? Uh, who are we looking to for salvation? If we're looking to the president or the next president or whoever for salvation, you will be really disappointed <laughs> yeah. in there. Um, and our hope is in Christ and in Christ alone. He is our rock. He's our fortress. He's our deliverer. He's the one we trust in, uh, and not in divinations and reading the tea leaves as, as they, people say, yeah. right. Or, or, um, uh, looking to this or that, or the stock market or whatever it is we're, we're trusting in will disappoint you. At some level, it's going to disappoint you. It's not going to save you. Yes. You cannot find salvation in those things. Only in Christ. So, I, you know, I, Babylon becomes an example of the arrogance. It, you know, of course, it's featured greatly in Revelation. Yeah. I don't think as a literal Babylon then, but it's just as an example of this is what the kingdoms of the world think of the, they're going to do. I am and there is no one beside me. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? The only I am is God Almighty. Yes. <laughs> That's the only I am. 
none of the others will stand. Yeah. Who sits secure, I like verse 8, who sits securely, who say in your heart, well, that security can go in a minute, moment. Yes. Anything else from this? I mean, it's just, I think it's a pretty powerful chapter. It is. What we, we trust in. It is very powerful. I mean, this, this is a warning that, you know, uh, no matter how, how comfortable you are, how firm your belief in all the things that you've piled up, um, it can all come crashing down in a moment that there isn't security in this world that we can make, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, even as Christians, we know that there isn't necessarily going to be security for this world, that there will still be oppressors, that there will still be people who work evil because we have been given free will and other people have been given free will. And so, you know, we look to Christ, we look to the day of the resurrection where things will be made right. Yeah. We look forward to that day. So let's, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we're thankful for your word, the truth of your word. We're thankful for examples that you have left and help us to examine our own hearts to see what is it that we are really trusting in? What is it we put our hope in? Uh, what is it that we get worked up over and, and think, oh, if this was just fixed, then everything would be okay. If we just had this person or that person or this, this event happen or that event happen, then everything's going to be okay. Lord, help us to see how foolish we can be in putting our trust in things that are here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, you are eternal. You are the rock. Uh, you are the one that is immovable. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you are the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through you. Thank you for your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a great weekend, folks.